Are you just not able to push out as much content as you want? And you're looking to speed up your editing time? In this video, I'm gonna show you how. What's up guys, my name is Dax Boulay, and in the past three years or so, I've been fascinated with editing. I watch all these editors speed edit through their edits, doing edits three times as fast as me, and it's insane how quick they are with the keyboard shortcuts and all this stuff, and I'm just fascinated. So I did a little research on how they do it so fast, and this video is pretty much what I've figured out. This is pretty much my whole workflow on how I edit, drop my editing speed times 10, and put out four videos a week, multiple TikToks a week, at least, you know, 30 TikToks a week, and I all edit, edit all in Premiere Pro, super fast. Fast, super efficient so let's hop into the computer and I'm gonna show you how it's done so here on my home page here I'm just gonna open my file Explorer the first thing I'm gonna do is organize my file so here in my um, hard drive it's an internal hard drive I'm gonna have YouTube videos it's pretty much all the YouTube videos I am working on at the moment for example here how to edit export in Premiere Pro video coming out very shortly I have a couple of files in here this is also a preset file by the way this is just a blank file it has all this stuff in so all I have to do is copy that file over super quick and then I can just put all my footage in here then it's divided by different camera devices or audio devices I have my HN4 recorder with a file in there EOS R with a file in there OBS studio which is pretty much a screen recorder OnePlus, which is my phone if I have any phone videos I want to add I can add a photo file and then exports here photo and video that's for later this is pretty much where it's gonna be now I keep that on there because I want to come up to creative cloud files and this is where I'm gonna keep my project files as you can see there's the ones I'm working on right now mobile photography and cinematic showdown I also have an assets folder which I will show you very shortly and the scratch this is where I save all my scratches. I have, as you see, a template file here. This is the first tip is great to have a template file. So you're not creating a new project every time. This template file already has sequences imported, color mats imported, you know, organized. All my assets are already imported. All this stuff is already imported. So I don't have to repeat it every single time. So all I have to do is come here, press control, copy, whatever you can press control C copy. Then I'm going to name it. So usually I name it the exact same thing as the file I have with the actual media down here, how to export in from Premiere 22. So come here, come here, rename. 22 how to export from Premiere. Bang, so now all I gotta do, open up that file. While that is opening, I'm gonna show you about my assets file. These are pretty much all the assets. If you don't know what assets file is, I have a video right here. You can check out on assets folders, super important, super great. But what they are is pretty much divided into a bunch of assets that I use on the daily basis, such as music, such as sound effects I use, video. So for example, here I have my channel intro, I have drone shots I use, channel outro, graphics, different you know photos of me, promotional graphics, all this stuff. And they're all imported into their own Premiere Pro projects. So I have a graphics, from Pro project of music and then as you can see in my template here you have to drag over because usually I keep my media on the left monitor I have but I'm gonna show you guys all this stuff in one single monitor I have assets so here you can see sound effects video music and graphics so if I ever need any of that stuff it's already imported it's already in the project so I just press double click here video it's gonna open up the video project it does lag a bit because there's a lot of video in it so it has to conform it all that's why I don't usually open them up unless I really need them and then here you can see it's all organized the exact same way it's organized in the other fi file drone shots so here I can find all the drone shots if I ever need one just quickly drag and drop it in now the reason I put it in the creative cloud is if I were going on my laptop I have to leave my desktop and all my projects are here and all I have to do is take my media itself and then drag and drop it into this external hard drive SSD that I have here take the SSD with me creative cloud I have that so I have the project files and I have the files themselves so also in here I have my assets but I also have my items here so sequences for example here I have a couple of different size sequence I have an anamorphic size sequence I also have 1080p 4k I have an Instagram size and an Instagram story size sequence I also have other here so I have bars and tones and a, a, a universal counting leader and an adjustment layer ready to go if I need adjustment now uh, usually I'll create a bin called media you I don't know why I haven't done it but I should put this bin preset in there and then I'm just gonna come here open up this file and come down to my media if I can find it and then I will usually just drag and drop everything in and it'll export in I have how I record is I usually have my main camera set up on a tripod like I'm doing right now to you guys which is my EOS R it's gonna be uncolor graded or anything and there's my video file and I also have my external recorder for audio which is right under here so I'm just gonna drag both those in just select them both by dragging over them right click come to synchronize and then synchronize audio make sure you're on channel one and it's gonna synchronize those audio 
audio, so I don't actually have to do anything really myself in terms of trying to find the waveforms and all that stuff. It does take a bit of time sometimes, but it will sync the audio and then I can just trim the edges and I have a fully well done audio. I'm just gonna come here, trim the edges. This was the original audio, this is the new audio. I just drag over, it'll instantly cut it. Now I'll select them both and you can right click and press link or I have a shortcut, which is my, my number three key. Now I have my video file and my audio file, which was shot on an external recorder in the video. So I'm gonna show you my shortcuts real quick before we get into it. The E key is gonna be an add edit key. This is pretty much just gonna add an edit into your video file, wherever your playhead is. As you can see here, I just press E key, it doesn't edit. This is a lot faster than using the uh, the cut tool because then you have to take out the cut tool, use that, and then go back to your select tool and then drag and all this. You just press the E key, it'll make a cut for you super quick. I also have the ripple trim next edit to playhead and ripple trim previous edit to playhead. Pretty much, you kind of have to practice with these ones, but the W key will cut everything to the left of the playhead all the way to the last clip. So let's say I have two clips here and I press the W key. It's gonna cut everything in between my playhead and that last clip. And now, as you can see, the reverse of that is gonna be the Q key. It's gonna cut everything to the right of it. So you just kind of have to practice with those. Shuttle left, shuttle right. This is pretty much after you press play, if you wanna speed up through your video, you just press the S key. Or if you wanna go reverse and slow down through your video, you press the A key. This will makes it super quick for scrubbing through the timeline. You can, you know, watch your whole video in double speed. Zoom in, zoom out, probably the most effective and efficient things you can have, D and the F key. The reason they're all here on the left side of my hand is because I never wanna be taking my hand off the keyboard. I always wanna be able to quickly just go in and, and use only my left hand and my mouse to do all the edits I need to do. That's what I can do. I can zoom in, zoom out, and pretty much just lets me, you know, go into any area in the track zoom in, zoom out, and, and it's super effective for navigating and people don't really use it because usually they're using this bar down here for zooming in, zooming out. Not very effective, use those instead. And yeah, the last one here that's pretty important is gonna be uh, clear and that's pretty much the, the delete button. So, you know, instead of having to go all the way to the right side of the keyboard, press delete, here is just gonna be the C button. Most people don't like this, but you know, you just press, you know, C and, and then it, it's gone. Super useful because you don't wanna be reaching over to delete every time. So those are the keyboard shortcuts, the main ones that I use. Now, once I'm done, here, I usually go into my effects panel. You're not going to be seeing any more of my project panel. It's going to be on the left side of the monitor, but you don't have to worry about that because everything that's happening is going to be here. This is pretty much how my effects panel is. I like to not leave a lot of tabs open. I like to have the, only the tabs I need, which are usually effects and effects controls are the main ones. I have my program and my source monitor, which mainly I'm just going to be using my program monitor. And I also have my sequence down here as large as I can get. I also like to just drag everything out here. So I just kind of drag it as big as I can so I can see the waveform because the waveform is very important when you're editing a dialogue sequence. Now, a couple things I do before I start editing is going to be color grading. Most computers can't actually handle color grading before, but I like to do it and then just turn off global effects mute. I have a specific color grade I made for my studio here called Studio Grade, but I like to apply this to the master clip. Most people don't know this, but if I do the master clip, once I apply it to the master clip, it applies it to every instance of that clip. So like when you make cuts and things like that, for example, like let's say I cut this video in half and just apply the studio grade to one of them, it'll only apply it to one of them. But here, if I put, apply it to the master clip, it'll apply it to both of the clips. And then usually my studio grade, my, my skin tones are a little off. I just like to use fast color corrector. If people don't know what fast color corrector is, but you can pretty much change the hue of things. So the hue angle here is gonna be where your, your different uh, hues are lined up. And I like to increase this maybe to eight. And that's my skin tones a little too bad. And then there, that just fixes up my skin tones a bit, makes them a little more tan, because I like to, to look a little tan. Now the next issue I have is gonna be, of course, audio. So I like to add audio. One thing you do have to be careful, if you are adding an audio preset, if you have too many audio effects, it can slow down your editing. I've had this issue in the past where pretty much all my playback is super slow because I added too many audio effects. But I have this preset here, podcast version two out of podcast. Pretty much includes an FTT filter that looks like this. If you want to copy that, adds a graphic equalizer that has these settings and a dynamics processor that looks like this just makes my audio look sound a little more rich. And then usually I'll just normalize all the peaks to negative three. Make sure you're doing this when your audio clip is really long, because if you're doing this when all your audio clips are cut up, the peaks are gonna be different, right? If you have a little small clip and then, you know, super silent, no peaks, it's gonna raise the peak all the way and it's gonna destroy the audio. So I usually do this right at the start and make sure negative three is where I'm aiming for, because negative three is the audio level you wanna aim for. So there you go. Now I have all that on. My computer can handle editing with a, a color grade, but if yours can't, I would use the 
global FX mute. And also if you can't handle the audio effects, I would suggest putting those on at the end. But now pretty much what I'll do is I'm gonna go through and do my rough cut. But what I'll do here is I'll find the first instance of where I start the clip and then I'm just gonna press the W key. Like I said before, it's gonna cut everything to the left of that. And now I'm just gonna go through and make cuts. So I'll just press the E key and then I'll press the W key and pretty much cuts that whole thing out. So yeah, this will be super efficient and I'll go through the whole clip and cut out anything I don't want. And then once I am done that, I'm gonna show you guys the next step. But for now, that's what I would suggest you do. One last thing I forgot to tell you guys is that I did have a screen record for this. So I usually like to just grab that, drag that over. One of my issues with the screen record is it doesn't actually record my external audio. So I kind of have to sync it to uh, the click sounds that, that uh, happen and what I'm talking about when I go into the computer. So that's what I'm going to do real quickly. There you go, I synced up my screen record. So now I'm just gonna run through, cut all the different things when I want my face to be showing, when I want my screen recorder to be showing, pretty much just go through the whole thing. I'll show you guys in this time lapse. Quick tip as I'm editing. If there are any things that you're gonna have to add to later, for example, you know, you messed up, you swear and you wanna add a bleep over it, you wanna add a title card. I usually will mark this with a marker, so just find the marker key on your on your keyboard shortcuts. Mine is set to four, usually it's gonna be set to M, and then you just press M, it'll set a marker for you. So later, when you're doing your other edit, you're coming back through, it's a lot easier to find those locations where you have to make those edits. So there you go, a couple you know minutes later, I think that was like a 30 minute rough cut. But yeah, now I have my pretty much my whole clip color graded. I have a little dimple, dimple here for my intro. And pretty much I have all my OBS Studio. That's pretty much the video. Now before I actually do the B-roll section of it, because most people do B-roll right after A-roll, I like to actually do my you know outro, intro, all that stuff. It's just so it's basically there. Call me lazy and say I'm a lazy kind of guy and I like to do the easy stuff first, but I like to do it because it kind of gets that step out of the way and then I'm like, all I have to do is B-roll and the video is good. So I'm just gonna come here to open my assets folder. You actually can't see it, but I'm gonna drag it over to you guys. I'm gonna open my video assets folder because that's where I keep my channel intro, channel outro, and then also some drone footage. That's gonna be my end card right here. I'm just gonna zoom in. And I like to leave a spot underneath because I usually put a nice drone shot. One thing weird with my end card is when I first made it, it was never sized right. It was missing a bit at the top. So I like to just add a little scale to that. And then my channel intro, I'm just gonna come over here. I press the Alt Q button, but this is pretty much called the track forward key. Let's select everything to the right of the keyframe so I can kind of move it over. Just look in your keyboard shortcuts, you can add that one as well. Now, what I like to do with this last clip is, as you can see, I lifted this up because I like to get my, my speaking right after there's this dead spot here. Kind of, to kind of, uh, they call it a J cut because the audio comes in before the video. And yeah, so that's pretty much gonna be my thing. Gonna come over here, add a drone shot if I can find one. And usually the outro on YouTube is 20 seconds. That's how much time you have to put your video card. So make sure your footage is 20 seconds long. So I'll find a 20 second clip or something, you know, like a 12 second. Yeah, there you go. Now it's doing a nice drone shot. Just go to effects, dip to black, add those to the start. So they kind of fade in from the black. There you go. Now that looks all good. That's great stuff. We are going to move on this video itself doesn't specifically have any b-roll but what i'm talking about b-roll is just video help explain a topic so let's say you know you're talking about cats you want to throw in some box footage of cats or something like that let's say you're talking you know you're trying to teach some photography and you're talking about you know why people should be shooting at this angle get a video of you shooting at that angle to help explain your point so that's pretty much what b-roll is but this video itself the whole b-roll itself is kind of like a, the screen record itself of me doing what i'm doing to kind of help show off so what I like to do is just run, scrub through all this and kind of resize things. So, you know, come here and, you know, I'm talking about the sequence. So I'll just come here, press motion, and then I can kind of grab these sliders and kind of just zoom in on the sequence for people. How I avoid, you know, making these hard cuts and all this thing, coming here and pressing control C. If you spam control C, uh, you usually don't spam, but press it once. Come here and you press right click on a video file, press paste attributes. This will paste the motion 
capacity and time pretty much just the the settings that you you just changed here so now as you can see this this file is zoomed in in the exact same way this file you know instead of having to you know every single time come here control C control C uh, for all the different positions you just come here press control C then right click and press paste attributes and an even faster way to do it now is I just set my keyboard shortcut for paste attributes to control F now I can just select all these clips press control F and then bang all these clips pretty much are zoomed in like that so if I'm talking right now about the sequence it's all zoomed in and then let's say I you know I I want to start I start talking you know about the whole thing and I don't want it to be zoomed in anymore just reset like that Control C and then I can just fix the next one as well now everything's fixed so now I just go through there and zoom clips in zoom clips out to kind of help show off the point so let's say you know I'm talking about a, an effect on the left side you know in the effects panel I'll zoom in on the effects panel but I go through there do all those b-roll cuts I'm just gonna do that real quick also sometimes when I'm editing instead of just zooming in certain clips I like to cut them out just to to, to remember remind people that I'm there talking to them um, so like here I could cut and then you know video of me talking to the people but oh, I only do that when the information on the OBS is or sorry on the screen record is not that important So there you go, my B-roll, B-roll sequence is done. If you're making a different type of video, your B-roll would be a little bit different, but that is pretty much my B-roll. Now it comes down, we're coming to the end of it, and yeah, it's pretty quick, eh? You're gonna wanna go through all the little marks you made while you're editing and pretty much make those adjustments. Either you're adding title cards, you're adding graphics, you're adding different things like that. You want to add all those things into your video right now. Um, so we're gonna do that and we're gonna go clear all our markers and then I'll show you the next step. So the first one here is an I key and an O key, so I'm just gonna come here, open up a new Google tab and say keyboard images and then I'll just go into where my YouTube media was saved and I'll just save it right in there and then now I'll open that up and I'll drag and drop that into my project get what you get and then there you go sometimes I talk about links themselves so in the video if you want to you know add a card or you want to add a link in the video I'll just do that and usually I'll set that to orange so I know that when I'm curating the video I come back here I look for all those markers and I know the time code of when to add the card or if I have to add a link or anything sometimes Sometimes I have markers that I don't remember exactly why I put there, so I'm just gonna delete that. One tip to remember you don't forget is by actually double clicking on it, you can actually add a name or notes. So I probably should have done that, but I'm pretty lazy. Make sure you're doing things as bulk. So if you're adding title cards, make sure you add all your title cards at once. It saves you a lot of time. So like, for example, here, I'll add my title card, I'll copy it, and then I'll go search for more title cards I have to add because then it makes it a lot easier in the process if you're doing things in bulk instead of, you know, doing things one at a time, then have to go jump back and forth and forth and, you know, sideways. Like, it's just super annoying. So I like to do my title cards all at once. As far as graphics go to make them more interesting, I like to open the graphics panel, aka the essential graphics panel. And this lets you add these cool title cards. You know, I know the one I'm gonna use this time, but like, you know, you know, cool animated title cards and they're pretty much free. You can buy some on Adobe stock or they give you a bunch of free templates that the temp free templates look good. So as you can see here, it opens up here. I'm just gonna find a simple text reveal. It'll load the motion graphics template and this will be saved near your scratch disc. So if you are deleting your scratch, just make sure that you have exported the video because then you will have to redo all your title cards. Quick tip here, when you are pacing, as you can see here, all these different uh, track layers are selected. Whichever one you select is where you'll paste. So if you don't wanna paste over anything, just select a track above and they'll paste to that track. It always pastes the lowest track. So if I have these ones selected, it'll paste to V2. So, I so there you go, I've cleared everything. And yeah, that's pretty much that. So now the last step is audio, of course. I like to do the audio last, cause like I told you before, it can ruin it. So I'm just gonna select all my audio clips here, add the podcast version two might lag a bit save now i'm going to come over here you guys can't see but i'm just going to open up my music assets folder and now music i'm going to select this is where i get my music from epidemic cop, uh copyright music and artless is how i divide it sorry epidemic is a good one artless is good these pretty much will link to your youtube channel and you can use any music on their website right now i am active with artless i still have saved music from epidemic but i'm not allowed to use it because i don't have a subscription with them right now so that's what i'm going to do artless come in here and pretty much choose a song i like to see how long my video is 14 minutes and there's a little trick I have once I choose a song to lengthen it to that time so I'm gonna show you guys that but first let me choose a song so I found a song I like a nice cool mellow beat vibe so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna save my project to start and then I'm just gonna right click here and say edit clip in Adobe audition 
I do have issues with opening Audition because I'm using Premiere Pro 2019. I don't like 2020 as much, it kind of lags. So I do have a little bit of issues with that. So it kind of says no, no, but then it opens after that. It's kind of just a glitch. Don't worry about that. Audition is just going to open here. Um, if you don't have Audition, then you can't actually do this. You're just going to have to find a cut and then kind of line them up and see where the cut isn't obvious and then just duplicate the music a lot. But this is a super easy way to duplicate your music. First thing, just click multi-track here. I like to save this again to the file where the media is. I just leave it untitled session because I don't really care and then just drag in the track and then down here in properties press enable remix This will analyze the clip pretty much kind of analyzing where the beats are all this stuff some super cool AI technology So it knows exactly where to make the cuts to make the song sound seamless There you go And then now target duration this is where you can pretty much make the song as long as you want So that video was around 17 minutes So I like to just round it up to nearly 20 minutes and there you go Now that whole song is going to be 20 minutes long You can either press multi-track uh, export to Premiere Pro or I, I find glitches when I do that. So I just press multi-track mix down, entire session. Choose where you want to save it. Go back down to that file I had. Bang, multi-track mix down, press okay. Takes a bit of time. And then once that exports itself, you can just drag that right back into Premiere Pro. And there you go, it's been exported. Drag it back into Premiere. Now I have this song that is you know, 20 minutes long, as long as the video itself. So how I like to audio level this is I always put my audio and you should background music to negative 26. You really don't want it that loud. So that's what you're going to do. And then a couple things I do is I only make it after the intro. It comes in after the intro. Then I put a little fade on it. So it kind of just comes in. And then right at the end, I like to find where I cover the screen. This is where I'll use the cut tool because it's a lot easier to line up and then adjust gain by 23, make it back to normal, add a fade in so it kind of fades into the outro and there you go and then I put a little fade at the end but I don't actually fade the video out so I don't know it's just my style kind of thing so yeah now I am done that the last 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 tip is gonna be doing the outro graphics itself so I like to come again into essential graphics it has a couple you know subscribe like things like that you can put a little text simple text if you would like but I like to use the essential graphics panel let the load and then I kind of line up where I say the different things so where do I say subscribe so there you go as always generally tap the like button and then I talk about subscribing go and then finally I talk about notification bell and then I just resize it all so like it's not all up in my face I just kind of put it right under my face now once I have all those I make sure that all my graphics are done I also forgot that I have a question of the day so I like to usually add this graphic itself for that one there so I just find what the question of the day is fill it in so I just come to edit select it and then you can put in the box here what did I miss question mark change the box color to you know let's make it a nice light green resize a bit to export the video first thing I'm gonna do I'm just gonna unmute this music I'm gonna select the whole thing and here I'm gonna come here open that up and make sure that I've selected from the in all the way to the out point now just press Control M or you can go up to file and press file and export in the top left corner but I don't like to do that h.246 is what I have my settings on I'll show you guys my preset I have YouTube I call the YouTube no upload one here here. Output name, I'll usually choose this, the file, media file I had before. Export, video, and that's where I'll choose it. Then now here are all my settings. I like to export my 1080 video in 4K files. When you're uploading 4K to YouTube, it does better compression and, and less less harshy compression than 1080p files, so it looks a lot better. Even if my video is originally 1080p, exporting it in 4K is going to give the video a lot better of a look. So I recommend you do that for all your 1080p videos. Come down here, I have 24 frames a second, progressive square pixels, NTSC, render at maximum depth, high quality, uh, level 5.2, CBR 100, uh, audio, ACC uh, 4800 hertz, sorry, stereo, uh, render at maximum quality, don't use preview use import into project I don't know I have that check this that's a mistake um, and then here you can so estimate file size pretty big file size a tip I'll give you guys for all you youtubers is if you, you can instantly upload videos to YouTube by signing in over here so YouTube here I'm signed in I can choose the privacy I can choose you know the description I can choose all this stuff and this just speeds up the editing process because once you export it it instantly starts uploading it to YouTube instead of having to go to YouTube select the video and all this stuff so I suggest you do that you can also set your description and things like that so if you have an upload default you just kind of paste that in there and it'll automatically add that description to your video you can also automatically add titles you can automatically add it to playlists you can add custom thumbnail and you can press a frame from source video so it's very easy to do thumbnails because you'll instantly put a thumbnail in you can add your own custom tags and then there you go now you save that preset in the top right corner here and it'll pretty much it'll save the preset and then every time you're exporting video you just click that instantly upload super quick YouTube workflow but yeah so that's pretty much the video I hope you guys enjoyed I hope you guys learned something let me 
know in the comments below what did you learn what was the coolest thing the coolest tip that you learned in this video i hope you guys enjoyed it very much gently gently tap that like button if you enjoyed this video subscribe i got new videos coming out every single week creators keep creating peace